Okay, in lab, on a routine basis, you're going to have to measure melting points of solids. This is the way we tell if we, this is one of the ways we, we, we help to identify a solid, and it's also a method we use to, to ascertain the purity of a solid, and you'll do this almost every week. Um, what you need to learn how to do is how to pack a melting point capillary and how to run the melting point. And again, this is really just a technique video. We're going to go over theory in class. So in front of the melting point machines, this is a melting point machine, pretty old. They're probably 20 years old. They predate my time at Brimar College, that's for sure. But melting point hasn't changed too much over the years. You'll find in the drawers in front of the machines little vials filled with capillaries and tubing. Okay? So if you want to run the melting point of a solid, what you want to do is take a little bit of sample and tap it out onto a watch glass. You want the sample to be pretty finely divided, so if necessary, grind it up a little bit with a glass rod or with a mortar and pestle. This is actually pretty finely divided. The melting point capillary will have a sealed end and an open end. You should take a good look at it and identify the sealed end. You take the open end, dip it into the solid, and we're putting it's very hard because a lot of people still aren't calibrated in the metric system, but you're trying to put two to three mill millimeters of sample into the tube, and that's about three millimeters of sample. If you have any doubt, we also have rulers in the drawer, and it's not a bad idea to measure it. An overpacked sample gives an inaccurate melting point. Then what you want to do is take a piece of glass tubing, turn the capillary over to its sealed end, drop the tubing down, and let it bounce. When it bounces, It'll get stuck in the tube. <laughs> that is so funny. Okay, let's try again. So I'm going to drop it. It got stuck. And it got stuck again. So what does this mean? It means my tubing is dirty. That's what it means. So it means I've got to clean that tubing for you before you come in here. But I'm taking it again. I'm going to drop it down a clean piece of tubing, and it bounced. It got stuck again. Okay, what is going on here? It's an indication that the sample is really staticky, I think. I'm going to try one more time. You get to see things at, your, at their worst. Usually it just drops. It's, it's already packed. That one dropped down, but it normally bounces a little. I think the sample is very staticky. But you can see this, the sample has moved to the bottom of the tube. And you only want to have that two millimeters, three millimeters down there. You measure it, OK? Now, when you get to the instrument, turn the instrument on. You'll see there's an ocular, a thermometer, OK? The sample goes into a little slot that's behind the ocular. And when you come into lab, we're going to go over this again, but take a good look inside the ocular. I don't know what you can get there with the video, but can you see three chambers in there? No. No. Okay. So inside there, there are three chambers. So you can actually run three samples simultaneously, and I highly recommend that. It saves a lot of time. Okay. Now your goal in running a melting point is to have the sample melt at a certain, is to have, this, to have the temperature going up at a certain rate, okay? The problem with this technique, it's, it's fundamentally flawed. And the reason it's flawed is that you are not measuring the temperature of the sample, okay? You're measuring the temperature of the metal around the sample. And so what you do is just like in a distillation, you crank the voltage up. So I turned the voltage up to like 40 volts. When I turn the, the voltage up to 40 volts, that metal block is going to start increasing at temperature in so, at some rate, okay? And you're see, when, you're, when, you're, when the temperature gets to the melting point of your sample, the sample will melt, but the block will continue changing at whatever rate you set it at. So say I set it so that it's changing at 10 degrees a minute. If your sample starts melting and the block is changing at 10 degrees a minute, and it takes a minute for your sample to melt, your melting point will be a 10 degree range. I don't know if that makes any sense. If you set it so it changes at five degrees a minute, you'll get a five degree range. So what you have to do is set this voltage so that the temperature changes at about one to two degrees per minute because melting, the melting of the sample usually takes a half to a whole minute, okay? And you do that using this graph. I don't know if you can hone in on that a little bit, but in lab we'll go over this and you could probably find these graphs up on the web, but what you do is on this axis you locate your projected melting point. So say I think this is going to melt at about um, 150 degrees. I would want to extrapolate over to the curve that says 2 degrees a minute, which is the second curve, and then down. 
Now, for something that melts at 150, I should have this thing set up at about 42 or 43 volts. We're going to go over this in detail in lab. All right, so what does melting entail? What does doing a melting point entail? It's very boring work. What you do is you stare in that ocular and you look for any changes in the sample. So you just stare, start talking to your neighbor. You shouldn't do that. Stare, 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 stare. What are you looking for? Typical sample, the first thing that happens is it'll sweat. You'll see like moisture on the inside of the sample. You should record that in your notebook. Write sweat point and then write, look up, see what temperature it is and then record it. The next point we're looking for is liquid on the bottom of the sample. If you see a droplet of liquid on the bottom of the sample, record that. And then you want the te temperature where the sample is all liquid. And again, this should be happening at about two degrees a minute, very slowly, not quickly. Um, so the only little things you should be aware of is that if you come up to a machine, they're usually, they often are hot because people use these all day. You have to make sure the temperature is at least 20 degrees below your projected melting point. And sometimes it's a little difficult when you first start. And it's not a bad idea to turn the tube around a few times to make sure you know what you're looking at. Okay. Now the last thing is sometimes you melt things that are really crude. Crude samples don't melt like pure samples. They're not going to sweat, form a drop of liquid, and then completely liquefy in a couple degrees. Crude samples have extremely depressed melting points, and they usually form slushes, like they look like slush, before they completely melt. And sometimes they'll melt over 15 or 20 degrees, but you'll see that in the first few weeks of lab. Okay, so I hope this helps with your melting point, and you can refer to this whenever you want. Thank you. See you in lab.